Hi guys, welcome, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, if this is your first time here, my name is Ayobami. Um, I'm going to be talking about. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm going to be talking about um the documents that you need to apply to schools in UK and then the places that are um the particular is it states now that they use in UK. I've been a city. Anyways, I'm going to talk about the documents that you need and how that depends on the location and all of that. So. Firstly, I would say that, um, like I said, there are some schools that have application fees in US. There are some schools that do not have application fees in UK. I'm so sorry, in UK. So if you would, um, if you know that you could pay their um application fee, the application fee, it depends on the school and all of that. But most schools actually use UCAS, and then when you use UCAS, UCAS is like the common app for USA. If you don't know what I'm talking about, um, go and watch my um, the playlist for USA, um, admission to USA it has all of those things. If you see me looking down, I'm looking at my laptop, so please pardon me for that. Um, I, I want to give you guys like the updated um, info and all of that because these things change every year. So that's another thing that I would like to um mention. If you've been on this admission process for a very long time, please make sure that you're not relying on the information you already know. Make sure you go back to the website. Make sure you go back to your schools and confirm there's different things going on, especially now that there's um restrictions and all of that. Some schools don't even call it on test again, like SATs, ACTs, and all of that. So firstly, if you'll be applying to UK, I would say your work result is paramount in this point. Most schools in U um, UK don't actually ask you for your high school transcript until you get to a certain um stage or a certain level. So that being said, I would say your work results, your scratch card, and what's that word? Your serial number and your PIN, okay? So um, you need your work results. So, and then um, if you wrote IGCSEs, please make sure to submit that because that's basically their exam and gives you a more advantage over others. That's if your school does it. It's not, it's not by force. It's not a must for you to submit your IGCSE results is not the most for you to do that. So um I would say so firstly um when, like I said your work results when you submit your work results to the schools most schools just ask you basic information your personal info all of those things the schools that have their own separate application most likely it just ask you for your personal info some schools might not ask you for essays some schools will ask you to write essays. But some schools like UK is not really really particular like they're not really strict for um recommendation letters but I would still say that at least have one or two because um definitely gives you an advantage even if your school is not asking for it do you understand so so apply to the UK um I'm going to be using international the um, info for international applicants please guys so let's understand that so most schools in uk also the admission processing i know that the montfort university comes in either a week or two weeks they don't have application fee i'll try and link it down on the montfort university for people that want to apply to those um schools without application fees and all of that so like i was saying you need your work results then you will now also drop your academic transcripts depending on the school. Some schools only need your work result, especially if you're going to use an agent, they would most likely only use your work result. But if you're applying by yourself, um, please make sure to have your work result and your academic transcripts ready. Make sure your academic transcript is ready. When I mean academic transcript for people that do not know your secondary school results, when I say secondary school results, I mean collation of all of that from year 7 to year 12 or JS1 to SS3 or whichever class you are in, please make sure to submit that. Then if you've, um, what UK does is if you worked before, you can submit your CV. So my school, in secondary school, we did um, internships. So you could build your CV around that. So they're asking for one academic reference. That's another that thing. They use different wordings for most of the things here in UK. I'm not in UK, I'm so sorry. Most of the things in UK. So recommendation letters here in the US 
is academic references in the UK, do you understand? So don't don't um, mix it up. And the difference between that is what I would say is your recommendation letter here in the US, you could have your counselor writing that for you, you could have your principal writing that for you. But um in the UK, since they're asking for academic reference, I'll most likely say get a teacher that's teaching you so that it is more academic, quote and unquote, than um English language test score that that's very paramount most schools most schools in um UK will tell you that if you wrote quiet and you had only um, C6 now in English then you do not have to write your English exams and all of those things but you can write CELT which is your secure English language test you can write um different exams you can write um CFR you can write IELTS. So it says for Africa, they collect YX level six or a, level C6 or above. So make sure that you send that. And if you know you are going to be using your YX result as your English language exam, please make sure that it's the original. Or even if you don't submit your original YX result, make sure to have your serial number and PIN for them to cross check. So, so make sure those things go once in your application because UK takes two to four weeks, some even six weeks to even get back to you on your admission decision. And you wouldn't want it to not be after maybe four weeks. They are not getting back to you that, oh, um, so your application is not complete. Please send us your serial number and PIN. And then you now have to wait extra time for um to know if they've accepted you. So please submit everything you can submit at the same time. Not necessarily at the same time, but before you finally, finally submit the application. Another thing to keep in mind is most schools in UK don't have um application deadlines except um I would say except big schools like Oxford or Cambridge, they're very strict with their um deadlines and all of that. But other schools in UK have they don't really have um what's that word? They don't have application deadlines. What they have is um they will tell you go to your particular course and check whether they're still accepting students. They do the rolling basis. When I say rolling basis, people in GOS understand. But rolling basis means they're still accepting students. So far, there's still space for that course. So far, there's still space for students in that particular course. So don't just think because there's no application deadline, you just go and apply straight up. Make sure to go to your um department or whatever, whatever program you want to study, make sure to go there and read if they have application deadlines. If they don't say anything about application deadlines, please make sure to apply. But make sure that you're given ample time to check these things out even before you start applying. Make sure to know all of your options and all of those things. Then after your English language test score, you need your personal statement. That is one thing that I know that UK schools always ask for a personal statement. I know most of you ask um ask questions like what should I put in my personal statement blah blah blah. I'll link you to something like your um common app essay like what is something what is one experience that has shaped you one what is one experience that has modeled you, um what is something that you you feel passionate about. I would say include that in your per, um personal statement. For example, um your personal statement is just basically telling them oh I'm, I'm this I'm that my name is blah blah blah. I'm, I want to study this, this blah, 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 in this school, this course, blah, 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 because of the following reasons and all of those things. Yes, it might seem like that's not a personal statement, but your personal statement is now going to explain to them, like, you're telling them those things you couldn't say on the application. That's basically what I would say your personal statement is. Most um schools will not tell you how many words they want. They won't tell you how many pages they want. I would most likely say maybe 150 to 300, don't restrict yourself to that. But I'm looking at it like 150 to 300 should be able to fill up a space on micro, um, a page on Microsoft Word. So that would most likely count as your um, as, as your personal statement. But I would also, so don't, don't make it too long to the point where they're now bored. But if you know that you're, you're a very, very eloquent writer, and you know that your readers don't get bored until they end, reach the end of your writing, please feel free to do as you wish. Then you need to submit a copy of your current passport. That's another thing. So if you do not have um a passport, because I know some people want to apply, they don't have passports here, so I don't know that. I would say 
go to your school's website. Some schools would allow you to submit your application and after they've accepted it, doesn't they'll ask for your passport, you understand me? But some schools will tell you, please make sure to submit it, blah, blah, blah. And also, um, check if your school has this thing. Um, basically, some schools will tell you, you can upload your document with your application as submitted, or you have to go to your applicant portal to upload your document. So if your school is using the first one, that means you definitely have to use, you definitely have to have a passport. But if your school is using the second one, that means you can submit your application even without having a passport because then your application is already submitted basically, and then they will send you emails, and then those from those emails you'd actually know that or oh, maybe um. They actually, 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 actually need my passport at, at the time of reviewing my application. Some schools just want it for documentation at that point in time. But I would say, make sure to know what you're doing. Make sure to know if your school is going to um, make it compulsory to submit your passport before that. Because so many people think that, oh, let's just apply, let's just apply. And once you've done these things, once you've submitted your application, especially if your school has application then applicants portal for you to upload your document please and please make sure you submit every single required document if you don't submit those things they will not review your application so if your school is the kind that has listed specifically that they will need the following information to make in order to make a decision on your application then you definitely need to submit your passport so that is one thing i would tell most people to keep in mind another thing is most schools in uk have a country representative so they have people in nigeria that you can you can find your country representative on the school's website for the montfort university they actually do have um a country representative in nigeria but it is free yes it is free it is free so they have regional teams they have people that you can send messages and all of that entry requirements so i'm just going to go to nigeria straight up Oh no, this particular one for Coventry University, that their agency fee, their um representative is not free, cause um they have listed a lot of agents here like Krypton Educational Services, 3A Global Resources, and all of those things. What I would say is this one: if you're going to use a representative, you would have to pay them for their services. The way it's looking but for the montfort university what the person just does is put you through ask you questions ask you if you're stuck or if they should apply for you and all of those things so that is one thing to keep in mind another thing is um compared to uk that has um courses like nursing then something maybe child care nursing maybe adult care nursing here in the in the uk it's just nothing there's you you would really find a university that has specializations quote and unquote the way the us has so that is one thing to know that um if you want to study something like engineering i think they have like different engineers in uk but compared to the us that there's engineering management there's engineering technology there's engineering itself there's different kinds of engineering so I would also say make sure so um like something for nursing now uk might not have the specification you want so that's another thing to check some schools will actually list the specifications that they have for nursing like there's nursing learning disabilities nursing child care in uk i don't know if they ha um, have more specializations than that so as i was saying if you know you don't want to do something like that don't just think because you're seeing nothing and it's UK, I just get to apply like that. Make sure to know what you want to do. I, I know I keep saying this, but it's actually very, very important. Oh, wow. So, um, UCAS, when I say UCAS, I mean U-C-A-S. Yes, UCAS actually has um a section for apprenticeships, a section for universities, a section for courses and all of that. So, I'm going to just search degree apprenticeships. Another thing I, I've noticed is if you say you want to go and study in the UK, I'm not that London, England thing confuses me. So please make sure to know exactly where your school is if you have a pre um, location preference. 
So now I just searched for, so I'm moving on to apprenticeship for those of you that already watched out that video. Like I said, level six is for bachelor's, level seven is for master's or graduate degree. So um, I would also say that if you have any questions about the degree apprenticeship, yes, I remember, yes, it is for international students and also their citizens. So that's why I'm saying please apply early so that you have more chances because Obviously, if it's a form of funding for their citizens, also they are also going to apply to that. So they have um degree apprenticeship. Most schools will list it out and all of those things. So that is for so another thing is UK would ask you for a deposit before they send you your cast, which is your confirmation of acceptance to study later. That's what you use to get your visa. So you have to actually deposit compared to the US. I'm sorry if I keep doing compared, compared. I'm just trying to give you guys your own um, options and all of that. In the US, you, you don't need um to deposit for some schools and for some courses. Yes, you don't need to deposit, but UK actually requires deposit. I think they um they could require a four thousand pounds um deposit and all of those things. So that is that for UK. I told you the document that you would need for um applying to UK. Don't now say because I said it, some schools have more than that. They have more um requirements than that. Some of them would ask you for interviews. Yes, UK is very, very popular for asking people for interviews. So keep it in mind if you're applying that you most likely do an interview and all of that. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Please make sure to subscribe. Um, I'm still going to be doing more videos on UK and all of those things. So please make sure to comment also if there is any other part that you want me to focus on or any part that you want me to touch base on or just focus on specifically on. But um, that's all for today. I love you guys. See you guys in my next video. Please make sure to share with your friends. It is free. I love you guys. See you in my next video.